Okay, That's well, great. Uh, if you want to go ahead and, ah, there you are. Great, Let's take it away, Andreas. Thank you so much. Huh? Yeah, okay. I should start off by thanking the organizers for giving me the opportunity to talk here and to talk about a precise mathematical statement. Also, I decided to use a bit intuitive language when phrasing the title. The slides that you, the pictures that you are seeing here on the first slide are from the attempt of getting everything published. The pictures that we that will be using in the talk are, will be rather looking like this when I decided to present these subjects for the first time at the conference and that which I prepared with much less accuracy, but also with much less time. This doesn't mean that the talk isn't up to the date of my knowledge. I was aware that I would need to update the literature slides because some of the items have appeared. And apart from this, I received by Sergei Melikhov just a couple of hours after the after the attribute after the abstracts have been distributed to the correspond to the conference participants email from him he pointed out that one aspect that in one aspect the uh, the question that i'm going to ask has a much more easier answer he pointed out some of his his works which i tried to follow and in the amount of time i really tried to get all of the references into the slides and into this talk. Uh, yeah, I, I try to get them really all in. And in this sense, I think the talk is up to date. Time to start the mathematical part and time to, to start to explain you what it actually means when I say that something is escaping before an isotope link circle. The question that I want to discuss in the first half of this talk is a precise isotopy extension theorem which means if you are given an isotopy of circles in the plane, you may think of embedded circles which are moving by Earth, which are moving around in the plane and are described by this map capital F. And you are giving a second concrete embedding of a circle into three space so that the second circle is disjoint from what happened. So that the second circle is disjoint from the first at time zero. The question is, does there, can you extend this map small g to a map capital G, which also st starts to make the second circle wandering around in time space so that they keep disjoint for all of the time. The naive picture is on top of the slide. The red string is a part of the one circle. It is moving, it is going to hit the blue circle and we have to do something about to avoid that they are hitting. I should remind those of you who haven't gone through not theory that isotopies can do a bit more than you might expect at first sight. Because if you just see a strand with a local knot, you can pull the strand, make the local knot get smaller and will disappear. With an ordinary isotopy, you can do it. You just have to think of that this parameter interval where the knot runs through this local knot gets simultaneously shorter and shorter, and you will have an embedding at each time, and you will have every point is moving around only continuously. So keeping, so usually in first lecture of knot theory, the lecturer shows you such a picture and explain that knot theorists classify their knots up to ambient isotopy, so another equivalence relation because they want their results to coincide with the experience of real life strands. My question was asked for ordinary isotopy, also called topological isotopy. And we have to keep in mind that we can always squeeze down a local knot to a point or conversely tie one in. And this is, is the observation that Sergei had when he read my abstract because in a case I wasn't primarily interested of, but which isn't excluded in the way I currently phrase the abstract, the answer has, a, his, the question one that I ask has a much more easy answer than to expect. Because if you have such a knot which is hung up by a local knot of the moving string, and the moving string is here, the black one, and you do what I said on the last space, on, on the last slide, 
squeeze this local knot to, to the point, then there's probably no chance to escape for the blue knot. In case, in a special case, Sergei even provided a precise argument for this, namely in the, precisely in the case where I have drawn where the linking number of the blue net is with the black one is zero. Any escape would mean that I would be able to homotope this out of the local black knot, which is squeezed down, but then it becomes something which just can wrap around the planar circle. So the fundamental group is set. The number is given by the linking number, which is an invariance with respect to ordinary isotopy. And if it was zero, it would be just unlinked. So I would be able to make a non-null homotopic path, this blue path. We know the fundamental group sufficiently well to tell it's non-null homotopic, null homotopic. In this case, it is quite easy that the answer of the question that I asked on the, on the first slide is no. It is less obvious in the case that I was primarily interested in, namely the case where the blue knot behaves like a meridional ring to the first knot. Then it's not so, I claim it's not so easy to see that you can arrange for mad situations where you just cannot move this blue knot when you start with the, when you start to move the black knot. But even at some question, I asked myself the following. It is not allowed to squeeze the black knot just down to a point because this wouldn't be an isotopy. But we have not theory, we can tie knots in and squeeze nooses down to the point. So wouldn't this just be an account and give a negative answer? We start with, uh, with this picture, tie a local knot in, open up one of the loops and create that way a kind of obstruction that we are moving from the right end to the left hand end of this picture, trying to squeeze this red knot off. Well, this isn't the desired counter example because on this picture, I just showed two possible escape routes for the red knot. What I showed on the first picture was a bit naive, just wait till something approaches and then go to the other side. If you pull a noose tight, it can approach from all sides and there is and waiting doesn't help. We need a bit of global control. But in this case, there is this, but, in, but an escape exists in this case. In spite of this, this example has already a lot of to do with the example that I wanted to show you in the first half of the talk. We will start with this picture. We will tie something in into the moving strand that we will create an obstruction to move over the people to move over this picture in order to squeeze the other knot off. But since this escape is probably always possible if we use obstructions from ordinary knot theory, we have to use obstructions from wild knot theory. And the motivation for the construction is the construction of Alexander's horn sphere. Let me briefly remind you how it gets constructed. It's constructed at a, as a limit of a sequence of approximating embeddings. We are always constructing concrete embeddings and the pre-image is the two sphere, which is here pictured as one point compactified plane. The green circle means this curve maps to the equator. We put the first horns in by, by a mere deformation, creating two horns, one gap regions, and we mark the areas where the map goes into this first horn. The, the basic inductive step is that for each gap region, we do this substitution that you see here, put two new horns in, creating two new gap regions. And if we would close them up, we would just get the Hopf link. And if we keep on doing this and keep on painting our green circles where we put in horns, we and paint everything to the limit of visibility, we get precisely this picture. This is what Alexander has done already and what we are doing. We are taking from this well-defined construction, the restriction to this middle horizontal axis, which gives then the embedding of a curve, which we can interpret as a knot. When doing the research, I was wondering whether anybody had this idea before, but from the references that Sergei provided, I learned that already in the 70s, this construction has been in literature by Rolfsen. I will call it the Alexander Horn knot. And 
Well, the picture then looks as follows. Recall, this is only the middle picture of something which started with the hopflink and where we're trying to move this obstruction. We are only looking at the knot. The red part is, this horn, is the horn, horn sphere, which I painted to make it a bit more visible. We are moving this over from the left to the right hand side, hoping to squeeze off this linked meridional disk. Well, is there an escape? This curve is homotopic to this curve, is as ambiently isotopic even, and having painted the top with a bit more. If there would be an escape, there would exist a homotopy from this part to the other side of the picture, which gives at least a curve with the same linking number. This would give a continuous image of an annulus. We could search it via a band to the continuous image of a disk, and the boundary curve of this disk, which therefore would be proven to be null homotopic, is precisely the same as this curve C, where already Alexander has proven that it is not null homotopic. Well, Alexander made his proof in the complement of the horned sphere. We need the proof of the complement of the horned knot. But the fundamental group of the complement of the horned knot is just an H and N extension of the fundamental group of the horn sphere. So this curve remains null homotopic because this horn knot goes, which is, a, which is running up and down all of these errors, all of the horns is going through all wild points. And the rest of the horn sphere is tame, consists always of this pair of bands that you have seen and that's how you can prove it. So we have definitely found a non-escape example and it's time to tell you why I asked this funny, any funny isotopy extension theorem. I was interested in the, in the question whether there are knots which are even with ordinary isotopy not equivalent to the trivial knot. A natural question for me because I am the student of two knot theorists and, and otherwise I'm currently interested in these wild construction probably a long-standing problem. As I learned from Sergei, it was already posed by Rolfsen in the 70s. I got really interested in it during the Canon Fest, which was the only conference of this series, which I have really attended already, already attended. It is clear if this question should have a positive answer, the knot will have to be totally wide because if it just looks like this one, it has somewhere a point where in a metric neighborhood is only hidden by one strand, which averagely behaves like a diameter, you can already do what I have showed on the second slide. Blow this neighborhood up, treat the entire exterior as a local, not and shrink it down to a point. This would suffice to get it down to the unknot with an ordinary isotopy. This is a very minimal tameless assumption, but knots which do so do not satisfy this tameless assumption, do exist. The easiest way to construct this is to start with any knot for the table, plug in this tangle, which has only already used by Fox and Artin to constrain the Fox Artin arc for each of the boxes that you have created it, packed it in and do this with infinite iteration. The limit will definitely consist of a knot which does not satisfy the minimal tameless assumption anymore. And Actually, this construct this uh, shortly after Fox Artinez Bing has also used this tangle already with iteration. He started his construction with the unknot, and the result was is today called Bing's sling. The most natural candidates for answering the second question affirmatively, at least Melikov claims and still that he is able to show that it is not isotopic to the unknot provided you forbid the isotopy to cross the central symmetry axis of the according picture. Well, if you want to answer question zero, you have to answer decide between seeking a positive and seeking a negative answer, which has long time I was mainly hoping for this negative answer because I was hoping with some stupid blow up trick or with the trick of pulling out at an extremal point. And even a totally wild knot has to have extremal points where there's an empty half space around, pulling out a part of the string and then applying this known trick. 
I was also one reason for a negative answer was also that up to this moment, I don't know any good not invariant which could prove for, for these hypothetical counter examples that they are. Hopf's linking number is an invariant for links. I learned from Sergei that he, partially together with Dujan Repovs, has investigated several equivalence relations somewhere between ordinary isotopy and ambient isotopy. And with the help of these relations, has concretely shown some non-equivalence theorems, partially even non-isotopy non equivalence for concrete links, which do not follow from Hopf's linking number alone. But at some time I changed my opinion and Raja, I would guess the question has a positive answer. Because I started to compare the problem of pulling out a link pulling out such a loop with the problem, planar problem. Change this planar curve whose function you see all so that the line of maxima and the line of minima go to different points on the y-axis. It can be done. Well, in the plane, this can be done, but only with the price that you have to do something about that they don't go through infinitely many different maxima and minima. Otherwise the result will be non-continuous. But in three space, you have the entanglement, just think of Fox art in arts, and you might not be able to do it. The question is just how to prove that, that such a, our totally wild knot is not isotropic to the unknot if you don't have invariance. And the way I was hoping to do it was, well, assume it exists, pull, assume it exists, stick a perpendicular disk to this knot and try to extend the isotopy so that this perpendicular disk is then taken into the wild environment and prove there such a disk couldn't be couldn't exist e.g by remembering the boxes that we had which are short tubes put together to tame tore and then discuss intersection curves but the question the question that i have discussed in the first are half answers in negative the extension possibility even to the boundary of such a disk. So what to do? The question is now for the last two minutes, throw away the entire idea or is there a hope to rescue this? Well, I think there is some hope, but you would need to develop really a new theory, which I propose to call TNC theory. Because recall, the entire counter example was based on the fact that Alexander correctly proved this curve C is non-null homotopic in the complement of Alexander's horn sphere. But it is only non-null homotopic as long as you forbid the contracting homotopy to touch the sphere. If you would allow the contracting homotopy to touch the sphere just as the, at the limit points, you would be able to contract it. Now it is easy to say to allow a homotopy in the complement of Alexander's horn sphere to touch the sphere, just we say, take the complement of the interior. But we have only the complement of Alexander's horn knot. If we allowed the homotopy to take on the points on the knot, they, we would be in R3 and we have everything. So we would really need to develop a theory which says touch, not cross would make sense of it for a knot. And I think such a theory is knocking at the, has been knocking at the door, also probably not developed so far. There are two places in literature which I wanted to point out in the last two minutes. The first was in the 60s when somebody whom I would pronounce Linninger, motivated by a question from Binks, started to look at the exterior of Alexander Horn's sphere and called it a crumpled cube. So he said, even if turning inside out Alexander's horn sphere, where the horns become the cracks, and if the cracks are so mad that they mess up that the interior is not simply connected anymore, look at it essentially as a cube, as a cell. And the second part where this part came up, where some, such a problem came up when three orders for brevity, I'm reading out the first strings of letters hot, discussed the problem how to get shortest path in arbitrary plane domains. One of the papers which uses this at the moment, but the only one which has methods which interest 
are interested in this context. The context is they used methods from analysis. So they needed open domains, but they needed on the other hand to push their curves up to the boundary because otherwise they would have the most obvious obstruction for having short paths. And so if you're discussing the red and the blue curve and the complement of P or Q, you find out pulling them straight would give the same curve running backward and forward between P and Q. For them, this was okay. They just needed to acknowledge, okay, if we represent homotopy classes, so equivalence classes by boundary elements not belonging to them, such things can happen. T and C theory would now mean to go one step further to say, if we are passing through P and Q, we give a G additional combinatorial information, like it passes on the left-hand side, it passes on the right-hand side, it gets reflected, it encircles how many times and what direction, and that way make those representatives fully legitimate representatives of the equivalence classes with these addition thing and try to develop a theory which really allows to handle these objects well. Because the obstruction that I found came from something mad. It came from Alexander's hard knot, which is something like an unnutting number zero knot. It shouldn't give an obstruction. And the obstruction would not be an obstruction to the existence of a TNC isotopy once it could be properly defined and developed. That was essentially all I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. We can uh, thank our speaker virtually using the, oh, there we go. Little happy clap things. Um, are there any questions for Andreas? Uh, if you do have them, you can either just type them in the chat or, uh, or just unmute yourself. I uh, uh, make my uh, uh, one note that uh, oh, where is it? It's uh, it's gone. Where is it? Uh, uh, something happened. That. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Okay, here we are. Uh, uh, I made uh, reference uh, in the chat uh, to the situation when uh, Fox Art and Art uh, mentioned. Uh, uh, by Andreas, so you 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 may consider another uh, view on this by looking at uh, quasi symmetric embedding of closed pole uh, in three dimensional sphere or three dimensional space, where uh, the sphere is widely noted on a dense subset of e its points, and uh, arc uh, may go to such uh, wide noted uh, points uh, freely and so on. So that may be uh, another view on uh, this situation with uh, relation between uh, uh, wild nodes and wild spheres and so on. Okay, if I get the reference, I will surely check it with. So this is in the uh, uh, Finnish Academy of Science. Uh, uh, so that's a uh, uh, paper uh, 1989, uh, this was uh, uh, published. Okay, I try to check everything which Sergey had, had written to me, and I will surely ch check this as well if I have the reference. So I can send you uh, the, a copy of this paper if you need. To just send me email, and I will be happy to send you. A, okay, a, a copy of it. Okay. And oh, today I will talk uh, about something related. So you may take a look from that perspective just immediately after your talk. Okay, <laughs> I noticed this. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, I had a question. You hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, the question is this. Is, is there anything special about that what you call the Alexander horn knot. If you took another, for example, if you took another simple closed curve that ran through those the wild points, but wasn't as symmetric as that, would it have the same property? Or... 
Yeah, we've got a special so Okay, I, I was a bit amazed when I found this because this haunt not in some sense, you, you might really discuss whether it should be a knot. At least you can isotope it to the unknot and everything of this isotopy would be an ambient isotopy apart from the final parameter. So in some sense, it would be an unknotting number zero knot. And... Mm -hmm. So I so the thing so I think it is it, the reason why I found it as counterintuitive at least that for a meridional ring there shouldn't be an extension is yeah what can an isotopy do if it moves the one curve just move the ring with it if it creates a local knot step eventually aside if it squeezes a local knot down to the point use the one that I had somewhere in the slide on the middle and with a bit of global control. What happened? With a bit of global control. This kind of escape should always be possible if, if you do something from tame knot theory. And you always know if some parts of, an, of a string of a knot come close, which have very different parameters, usually they cannot get arbitrarily close. So I, I don't think I answered your question, but. Uh -huh. Then. So currently, I, I really, I really suppose that the only obstructions can come from something similar, like this Alexander Hart knot. But then one, sh but they couldn't. Oh, but since they are an honest obstruction to the theory as it currently exists, if you want to attack the problem whether there are unknots, whether whether there are knots not isotopic to the to the unknot. Uh -huh. You would circumvent it by trying to make sense of this of a TNC theory, not not from the examples. Of course, it's an open question. I'm, I didn't do that much to de to develop this theory so far because, okay, it's publication strategy. Thank you. <laughs>